Well, hi there. This channel, since the very beginning, has been focused on helping you to figure out which pet reptile is the best pet for you. We have done this by telling you the pros and cons of each reptile, by helping you see what is out there, how difficult it is to get, care for, pay for, handle, and keep alive. We try to give you a clear idea what it would be like to keep each reptile. In many ways, which pet reptile is best for you will depend on your specific wants and limitations as a keeper. We have done this one species at a time. But what we've never done is determine which of the major groups of reptiles make the best pets. That is, until today. Because today, we're gonna get to the bottom of this question using science. Even I don't yet know the winner, because the winner will be revealed through the score. First, let me introduce you to the contestants. Our contestants in today's competition will be lizards that aren't snakes, snakes, Turtles that aren't tortoises, tortoises, crocodilians, and dinosaurs, of which the only living examples are birds. Tuataras are not on this list because you simply can't get them. However, you are allowed to keep all of the other groups, so they're all contestants. And now I need to introduce you to our 10 categories. These categories will be used to determine our overall champion of reptiles. And these categories are the joy of handling. Like, is it fun to handle or just something you can do? Is it something you can't do? Is it going to hurt the animal? Is the animal going to hurt you? Can you handle them regularly? Things like that. The joy of observing. How much fun is this animal to observe? Is it active when you are? Is it generally going to be active or sedentary? Will it hide from you or act normally in your presence? Are its behaviors going to keep you entertained for minutes or decades? That enclosure though, how big is this enclosure? How complicated is it to build and maintain? Water features, heat, UVB, substrate. Is it gonna cost you an arm and a leg to properly house this animal? Everybody's gotta eat. What does it eat? How often does it need to eat? Is it hard to get food for it? Is that food objectionable? Yeah, but can I get one? Two Ataras didn't make this list because they can't be obtained. The rest can, but how hard is it to get one? Are they illegal? Exorbitantly expensive? Are they just hard to find? Are they easy to breed in captivity? I'm going on a trip. Are you or are you not? How long can you realistically leave this animal? Could you train someone else to take care of it while you're away? Would they want to? Yeah, but it lives too long or not long enough. Are you buying yourself a pet or are you getting a pet for your grandkids? Will it die right when you really start to fall in love with it or will it give you many good years of enjoyment? Am I gonna kill this thing? Does this animal tolerate mistakes or does it not? Like, will it die if I look at it wrong or could I realistically keep it for months at a time without food or water in the hold of a ship? By the way, this isn't an excuse to mistreat an animal, but how difficult is it to keep this thing alive? An accessory or a lifestyle? A pothos, like that one, is an accessory, something you think about from time to time that looks pretty and takes very little of your time. A child is a lifestyle. Your life revolves around that thing and its needs. Is this a plant or a person? And finally, dinja, 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 which speaks for itself. Is it harmless, hazardous, or deadly? I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who do so much to help this channel, help this channel to grow and become what it is today and come to this point where we're really answering some important questions. And, and I just wanna point out that at the end of all of our videos, you actually see the names of our stinking rad fans. That is one of many ways that we show our appreciation for our rad fans and stinking rad fans and you know all that they do for us. There's a lot of features, a lot of perks to supporting us on Patreon, so please consider checking it out. Now, when it comes to scoring, I, I definitely need to explain how this is gonna happen. This is science after all. Welcome to the methods section of our video. For each category, a group can receive a score of zero to five. This will be based upon how they compare to the other five groups. For each category, the groups will be arranged from worst to best, six to one. The group that ranked last, number six, will receive zero points for that category. 
Number five will receive one point. Number four will receive two points. Three will receive three points. Two will receive four points. And the best, number one, will receive five points. Since there are 10 categories, a group can receive an overall score ranging anywhere from zero to 50 points. Scoring will factor in the general characteristics of the group as a whole, but will be biased towards the highest scoring examples for each group. The average matters, but so does the presence of group members that far exceed the average. For example, when it comes to the joy of handling, if we're looking at a group like monitor lizards, which are a smaller group than what we will be discussing in this video, but this is just an example, monitors are, on average, not very good to handle. So they won't be near the top, but the fact that there are some monitors like Aki's that are extremely good to handle means that monitors will likely score much higher than you would predict if you only looked at the average handleability. Because if you want a handleable monitor, you can get one. Remember that, like always, not all of the categories are of equal value to all people. Thus, the final score may not be what matters most to you. Pay attention to the specific scores that matter to you. Let's get underway. Our first category is the joy of handling. Coming in last at number six are the crocodilians, because even the most handleable croc is borderline unhandleable. At number five, we have tortoises. Some get prohibitively large, but generally it's just that it isn't much fun and they can produce an amazing amount of fluids when stressed. Number four, turtles. Many of them are wet, they aren't difficult to handle except for their sharp claws and kicking feet. It's just that they aren't much fun to handle. It's not that it's hard. At number three, we have lizards. Many lizards can be very good for handling, though some are absolutely unhandleable. Lizards like bearded dragons are super easy to handle. Emerald tree skinks are like friendly birds to handle. And that brings us to our number two here, birds. I, I, I guess it makes sense that birds would be above the lizards, you can have an amazing relationship with many birds. Getting them out and interacting with them is one of the main reasons to get a bird. And number one, snakes. Handling is where snakes really shine. It often amazes people how relaxing it can be to handle a snake. Many snakes have a very low-key energy that they seem to be able to transmit to a handler if that handler can let go of their fear. Obviously not all snakes are good or even safe to handle, but the list of snakes that are amazing to handle is very long, as are they. The joy of observing. At number six, we actually have our prior winner, snakes. As much fun as snakes are to handle, they're not so fun to watch. Some can be, but generally they don't do much most of the time. In fact, many will spend a lot of time concealed within a hide. When you're a noodle with a head, the world's a scary place. At number five, we have crocodilians. Crocodilians, unlike snakes, are generally visible and they look incredibly cool, but what are they doing? Generally, nothing. They might be in the water, waiting, or they might be on the bank with their mouth open, hanging out. When they do something, it is very cool, but most of the time, they aren't even moving. Number four, tortoises. Tortoises are often doing something. As often as they can manage, that something is eating. It might also be digging or walking up to you looking for something to eat. They like to eat. And that is the most fun thing they do. At number three, we have lizards. Lizards are, in many cases, very active and engaging to watch. Many are busy almost all of the time. Chameleons and monitor lizards really stand out in this way. Lizards are just really fun to watch. But above them, at number two, we have turtles. Aquatic turtles in particular are almost always up to something. They seem to like to watch you just as much as you like to watch them. They're like tortoises, except that they live in a 3D world where they can move about very quickly. They're massively underrated as an engaging pet, if you ask me. And at number one, birds. Birds are endotherms. Whereas all of the other reptiles use very little energy and thus need to obtain only a little food, Birds are the opposite. They're busy. They're also intelligent and they fly. Of course, a bird trapped in a little cage isn't that much fun to watch, but if you give a bird ample space to move around and be, you know, a bird, that thing is going to be fun to watch for hours at a time. That enclosure though. At number six, we have crocodilians. 
These things are gonna need some sort of a filtered pond, plus a huge basking area with adequate basking and UVB lights. Plus it needs to be escape proof for an athletic, powerful, intelligent dragon. Even the smallest and most reasonable to house crocodilian is still quite an impressive beast. At number five, we have birds. Most birds fly, and to be really enjoyed, they should have space to fly. Number four, tortoises. Tortoises like to move. They like to burrow and plow through stuff. Even small tortoises need lots of space. Number three, turtles. Most turtles are semi-aquatic. This means that you need a tiny version of the crocodilian enclosure. That is far more reasonable than a crocodilian, but it can still be a pain in the neck. And number two, lizards. There are many lizards that are very reasonable to house. UVA and UVB basking lights are often very important with lizards. So that's one of the bigger expenses. And at number one, snakes. It's hard to beat a snake for housing. They can be kept very simply or very beautifully. Many do well with heat, but no special lighting. And for their size, they don't require the space that lizards or other reptiles will. Though they generally will use the space if you give it to them. Everybody's gotta eat. At number six, crocodilians. There are prepared crocodilian diets, but all crocodilians eat meat. Whole prey would be best. This can mean a lot of relatively large feeders. These will be primarily vertebrates, and they like to eat a lot. Number five, lizards. Most lizards require some form of animal prey. This can range from insects to rodents with only a few eating larger prey. They also tend to eat rather often. That said, lizards are a diverse group, so there are many exceptions. Number four, snakes. Generally speaking, snakes eat rodents and other vertebrates. That is a problem for many. That said, they generally eat about once a week or even less often. And many species will do well on frozen thawed rodents, so you don't need to deal with obtaining and feeding live feeder animals. And number three, tortoises. Tortoises generally eat vegetation almost exclusively. There are exceptions. This is really great. No live feeders or even dead animal feeders for the most part. They do eat a lot for their size, and some get to be enormous. This means that you will be making frequent and sometimes expensive trips to the grocery store. At number two, birds. Birds often do well on prepared diets, seeds, and other foods that last a lot longer than do fresh vegetables. That isn't to say that they don't appreciate fresh foods, but you probably don't need to make special trips just for your bird. That said, they do eat frequently, which is why they lose out to uh, another beaked reptile. And at number one, we have turtles. Turtles generally appreciate the occasional live feeder insect or fish, but most of them do really well on prepared turtle diets. This means that you don't need to buy food that often, and when you do feed them, it doesn't look like something that you might consider keeping as a pet. Yeah, but can I get one? At number six, we have crocodilians. Crocodilians are illegal in many places, and while not crazy difficult to get, uh, they're not at every pet store. At number five, we have tortoises. There are a few tortoise species that are fairly common in the pet trade. Your selection is limited unless you really know where to look. At number four, turtles. Most pet stores that sell reptiles sell turtles. There are a few very common species. Others are pretty easy to find online. At number three, birds. Birds are pretty common in pet shops. You have a wide range of birds that can be found. Number two, snakes. Snakes are everywhere. While there are a few species that are overly represented, you have a lot of options. Snakes are the most successful squamate lineage, and that is reflected in the pet trade. And at number one, lizards. Lizards definitely take the cake. Yes, snakes are the most successful lizard lineage, but there are far more lizards that are not snakes than lizards that are. You can get them at every pet store that sells reptiles and you will have a lot of very diverse options. Okay, whew, that brings us to the halfway point. Currently, the scores are as follows. Lizards that aren't snakes have scored a total of 16 out of 25 possible points. Snakes, also 16 out of 25. Turtles, that aren't tortoises, 16 out of 25. Tortoises, nine out of 25. Crocodilians, one out of 25. And dinosaurs, birds, 17 out of 25. 
So with half of the points in the books, birds have the lead, with snakes, lizards, and turtles just one point behind, which this is a big surprise to me. Tortoises have some ground to make up, and crocodilians are looking like they might not pull this thing off. But will they? Who do you think the winner will be? Comment your predictions down in the comments, and if you're enjoying this contest, please take a moment to like this video, because this video is already getting a bit long. So we're gonna split it into two parts, and we will release the second part as soon as this video gets to 5,000 likes. So if it gets there today, part two will be the next video that we release. If you wanna see it sooner than later, please drop a like. And don't forget to comment who you think the winner will be because I don't even know just yet. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. This fly has got to go away. Does this animal... I almost got you. Come on back, fly. I have a mantis who wants to meet you. Number five? We uh, get to see the second one. We're gonna make it now. Yep. Okay, because I don't want to wait. Nah. <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> that is exactly what I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs>